Well, hello, it's midnight. And uh, I want to start just by saying how much I appreciated making the video with uh, Aristo that aired uh, and the one just previous to this one. And I look forward to doing more videos with him. And in fact, I'd love to do some videos with uh, Alicia de Avalon and Peter Van Runt and others from Australia and perhaps others that I haven't even ever done an interview with or a program with. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, having the interchange back and forth with another human being on the videos rather than just talking for 10 minutes myself. Anyway, the, the title of the video for today uh, was triggered by my <laughs> boy, conversation with my son, who, by the way, is having a little bit of a party in the other part of the house with uh, there's three friends over there right now I got up to go to the bathroom and my son called me out and I go out there in my underwear <laughs> and uh, there's three people standing sitting there in the living room uh, so anyway I didn't expect that uh, but the title is what do I mean by homeless my son gets upset at me when I say I'm homeless he tells me I'm not that I have a roof over my head etc he's right but I still see myself as homeless. My possessions are stored wall to wall in a double wide garage packed tightly several layers high. And in order to find things I want or need, I have to go and dig, searching for items I used to be able to find quickly and easily. To me, that is homeless. Most of my stuff is barely accessible. Yes, there are people who have it worse, living on the street or in an automobile. I am not to that point, and I hope I never get there. Nevertheless, I am doing my best to recover from the traumas I've been through in the past year. It's not easy. And when I listen to Fer Tan Tanson Fairmont, The Divine Right of Financial Sovereignty, Part 1, March 15, 2016, and hear how successful the free man movement is, I can't help but wonder why I have a very different experience. I filed my UCC-1 and put my home in a non-statutory trust and other free man remedies, all of which did nothing to prevent the loss of my home against my will. Damn it, they stole the roof over my head at 473 Thomas Drive in Melbourne, Florida, supposedly buying it for $100 when I paid a little over $275,000 back in July 2005. The fraud of the banks, their attorneys, and the crooked judges make, made me homeless. I am certainly not a real free man either with what I have experienced. Indeed, uh, I watched that hour and a half video that I mentioned there with Mr. Fairmont. And I mean, I really liked what he had to say. And there was a time in my life I would have actually believed it. Uh, he spent himself five years in jail as a free man, um, <laughs> which is interesting. Uh, but he hasn't paid taxes on his on his home. Uh, I don't I don't know his whole story, so I'm not even going to go into the whole whole detail of his story. But he's still extolling the the virtues of being a free man and being financially sovereign. And when you have to go to jail for something, uh, <laughs> you know, and when you lose your home uh, to crooks, and they are nothing less than just crooks, I'm sorry, I'm talking about the attorneys, I'm talking about the judges, I'm talking about the, the banks that, that promulgate the entire system, and especially of course, the elite establishment that created the whole system to begin with. It's a system of slavery, and we are the slaves. We are the chattel, and they do whatever they will to us. Uh, yeah, they suppose that they are allowed, allowed to do that because we create contracts with them by getting things like driver's licenses and, and other uh, things that they have twisted to put themselves in the position of being the slave master and we are their chattel slavery and they can do with us as they will and they have been getting away with it for generations folks and especially 
within the past few hundred years when the Rothschilds came on board. I guess, I don't know when they actually, the Rothschilds actually came on board. I think it, it was probably the late 19th century, but certainly for the, throughout the 20th century, uh, they've been the ones that have been in the controlling, the control seat in the elite establishment as far as finances and uh, uh, things like that go. They have controlled the financial system of the world. And it's a system of slavery. And from their perspective, we don't own our own homes, even if we've paid cash for them, as I paid for mine. They still see themselves as having a right to take our homes from us whenever they please, even if we've not broken any laws or done anything wrong. Uh, we are a threat. Truth is a threat to these liars that have taken control of everything. And, and living on a planet like this, we are homeless. Now, of course, there are tribal customs in various parts of the world, including the United States, where the natives do not own anything. They share. And that's a different type of culture. It's not the culture that I grew up in. It's not the culture that most Europeans and Americans uh, have grown up in. And, and people in Australia and other parts of the world, too, own their own homes, or at least have the appearance of owning their own homes, unless the state decides it wants the home. And it doesn't even matter what circumstances surround your personal individual situation. If they want to take your home and or take your freedom or take you out, uh, they do so with impunity. Uh, they do this with land in the in the United States. They've, they've done it. They, they killed, uh, I don't remember his name right off the top of my head now, but that uh, that rancher out in the uh, western part of the United States uh, who they just shot in cold blood. Uh, they claimed that he pulled the weapon on him, which he didn't. He had his hands in, his, in the air, and they shot him anyway. I mean, more than one person, armed cops, which were acting as criminals. I don't care. You can't hide behind a badge and and not be to, and make yourself a non-criminal. If you're doing criminal acts, you're a criminal. Period. You are what you do. You are what you take orders about. And they are taking orders from criminals and committing criminal trespass and criminal murder. And this is the world that I see. It's the world that I've tried to wake people up about. Because if enough of us woke up, we wouldn't have this stuff happening. They couldn't get away with it, except that most people buy into their, to their BS, to their control grid, and kowtow to their every, every whim. Even the churches, as I've said before, obey the 501c3 regulations, which are also criminal regulations that control freedom of religion and freedom of speech within the religion. You're not allowed to talk about political things. Why not? If political things are affecting the world you live in, you have every right and even a responsibility to talk about them. <laughs> and this financial enslavement with 501c3s of the of very institutions that would enable a voice to be heard at least are squashed they, the the 501c3s squash the people that speak out like me and others and this has to stop i'm really looking forward to meeting some of my friends uh when i make the trip to australia next month uh It'll be leaving like the end of very end of this month and coming back at the end of the following month. But I'll be there. I, I hope to be there for about a, uh, a full month. And who knows if I really like it there and if I make the connections and if I don't have money to uh, get my own place here in, the, here in the United States and I'm unable to get established here, I'd be willing to even live in, in Australia perhaps. I mean, I don't know. I've never been over there, so I, I, I'm going to be exploring. But uh, folks, I do ask for your prayers. Uh, I do ask for help again with the situation that I'm in. If you're able to uh, to send me any, any money to, to help uh, cover the trip, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you again for listening, and namaste.